Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Happy Friday. Uh, got a couple of things I want to clean up talking about yesterday's game. Just a couple of little dangling things that weren't immediately apparent right after the game ended. But in the hours after the game where I streamed talking about it with a bunch of different people. We had a great stream last night. I uh, brought some of it over to uh, Twitch after and after having the opportunity to think about it, there are some things that I just want to float out there. Some kind of final thoughts on that mess of a game. Um, basically, this video is about two people in particular. Uh, first is Damian Lewis, and next is Geno Smith. I, I want to talk about those two guys for a second here. Uh, this one, the first thing, Damian Lewis, this is just pure objective good news. Um, this, this is... Um, I gotta be honest, when we heard this a little after the game was over, I was so relieved I kind of forgot about a lot of the terrible stuff from that game. It This news, getting this news felt like almost a win to me. It, 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 it almost erased, I don't want to say it completely erased, but it, because it didn't, but it erased a lot of the garbage from that game last night. So... His x-rays are negative, and he only has a lateral ankle sprain. It is possible, I don't know how likely, but at this point it is possible he is ready to play week one against Denver. Now, I don't think that's likely going to be the case, but for my part, when the cart came out, when they brought out the air cast, when players reacted the way they did, mentally... I was like, oh, he's out for the season. Mentally, I immediately just went, okay, he's out for the year. I got to deal. I, I, mentally, I got to get over that because it's clearly going to be the case, right? Like, this is going to be a devastating injury. This is bad. But, well, here we are. And now that we know that that's not even close to the case, it, it's like I just reached into my pocket and pulled out a big wad of money that I had no idea was there. I am it, it, house money. It really is. It's like, I, I was mentally checked out on Damian Lewis. Mentally, I was like, okay, done for the year. We're on to Phil Haynes and Gabe Jackson. And now we have been spared that. So, great news there. Relieving. And I, I don't know if it's likely he's back for week one, but he is going to get to play a lot this year, it looks like, which this is a big year for him. So, this is big, big news right here. All right, um, as for the Geno Smith stuff that I wanted to go over, because uh, yesterday I was one of the people who was kind of, I don't know, I guess in this context you would say defending Geno. I was looking at, that, looking at that game thinking to myself, you know, these receivers that he's working with, not doing him any favors. Um, the... the the one pass on third down got batted down would have been a pretty easy conversion, I believe. Like, I was looking at this stuff and I was kind of going like, why is everybody talking about Geno? And I expressed that in the video yesterday. I was like, I don't understand why people are going after Geno so viciously right now when nobody around him is helping him. And as the night went on and as I continued to read stuff that came out of that game, it became clear that it was a massive majority of people, like like a flood of people coming out from everywhere. Like, oh, Gino's the worst. Gino's awful. Gino's, we need to get him out of here. Jacob Eason is better. This guy's better. That guy's better. Um, Troy Aikman right now could come out of the booth and be better. Uh, we could go get Matt Hasselbeck out of whatever he's doing at ESPN right now. He would be better. Everywhere. And... As that stuff piled up, I, I, I see it from all different kinds of people. I see it from people who just watch the games. I see it from people who I know are very studious in this area, who are watching analytically, who are watching trying to really get down to the nitty gritty of who is good and who is bad. I see it from all these different angles and generally speaking, you get to that point, I'm looking at it and I go, well, there must just be something here that I don't see. There must be something going on here that I didn't fully pick up on. 
because here's the thing, and this is the thing I'm going to really draw attention to here, and I consider this to be kind of good news because it feeds into what I want, but one of the people who seemed unhappy with the way Geno Smith played was Pete Carroll. Um, the quote from Carroll about Geno was, he did okay. You know, we needed to come through. We needed to help him a little bit. You know we needed to make the plays around him too. Now, he does kind of defend Gino a little bit, as I did, which I think is fair. But I can't help but look at that and... It doesn't sound like a guy who's very happy with him, right? He did okay. Not he did good, he did fine, he did great. He did everything we wanted him to do. It wasn't... It, it's not the kind of stuff you usually hear from Carroll and I'd say this coaching staff in general. He did okay. That's not good. <laughs> from Carroll... When he says, you did okay, it's kind of more like he's kind of saying, no, you were bad. So I'm looking at it from all these different angles, different people saying, oh, Gino, Gino sucks, Gino sucks, Gino was terrible last night, da 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 And I think what it is, after thinking about it for a little bit here, I, I, think, the, um, I think the answer might just be, I have such low standards for Gino Smith that as long as he doesn't throw the game away, as long as he isn't dancing around in the pocket waiting eight seconds to get sacked, I'm not going to have a big problem with the way he plays. Um, to me, the difference between Geno against Pittsburgh and Geno against Chicago was not particularly significant because in my mind, as long as he's may, as long as he's just getting the ball out of his hands somewhat quickly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay with it. And maybe it's just a thing where my standards for him are so low that I look at him not turning the ball over and him not getting helped by his receivers and I go, yeah, that that's uh, good enough for me. That's what I expect from Gino. I'm good with it. Um, I still don't totally understand why the anti-Gino sentiment from that game was as strong as it was. But I will say that at this point I can only conclude that there was just something there that I wasn't seeing. Like, a lot of people were critical about how he never pushes the ball down the field, he always tries to, t tries to check it down, he never, he, he never goes through his reads. I'm like, yeah, he's Geno. I would love for him to just stick to his checkdowns, because at least it means he's getting the ball out of his hands quickly. At least it means he's not taking dumb sacks. So, I, I, I think it's just a matter of Maybe there's a little something there I'm not totally picking up on. Maybe people were just expecting him to improve significantly from that Pittsburgh game because it was, this is his opportunity. I don't know. But here's the juicy part of this. The fact that Gino seems, I'm sorry, Pete seems unhappy with Gino has to open the door to Drew Locke. If he can get healthy by Friday's game, so he's got a little more than a week, I think, to get healthy for that game and he can get out there play well maybe drew lock is back on the menu for week one and look i'm not in love with either guy i don't feel attached to either guy really but drew lock would make this season a little more fun and a little more interesting so i'm not against it i i just didn't think that the way gino played yesterday was going to change carol's mind but looking at this quote i'm wondering Maybe it did. We'll know in a few weeks, but I don't know. I'm trying to look at this differently. All right, I'll see you guys later. Uh, we're going to do another Seahawks stream tonight after I get off work. I don't know exactly when. Maybe maybe as early as 4, maybe 5, 5.30, 6, somewhere. I don't know, somewhere around there. I'll, I'll play it by ear, and we'll go for another hour to talk about this game because there's a lot to sort out after that little bit of a debacle let's let, let's just call it a debacle and um we'll, we'll we'll continue to track this as things go forward uh gino's injury by the way not sig considered significant he uh had no ice on his knee after the game was over um they just didn't want to risk it so the health thing is fine but i'm i'm just it, it's really interesting because i really didn't understand the vicious gino hate coming out of that game and I don't totally understand it, but at this point, I have to concede 
it's probably just a product of me having really low expectations for Gino. I just want him to not be the reason why the game gets blown. And I don't think he was. But to the people out there who are saying it, the problem was he didn't grab this opportunity by the horns, you're right. You're right. He left some stuff out there. But that's Gino, I guess, is the only thing I can say about that. All right. Um, hopefully Drew Locke has the door open for him and he'll kick it down. But uh going to be a while before we find out if he'll even be able to play because Gino can do whatever he does. Gino can play as mediocrely as he, he he pretty much does most of the time he takes the football field. Um, it's it's not going to matter if Drew Locke isn't even healthy enough to play next week. I don't think so. Time will tell. Let me know what you guys think. Do do you guys really think that Gino was that bad yesterday? Are 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 you seeing some of the things that I saw and a few others saw in regards to not getting help from his teammates? Let me know. I will see you guys later today. Go Hawks.